Why do we need these interconversions? Because we already know how to put acyl groups on. Um, we know how to put acyl groups on. How would we get this group on here? Phenyl crafts. Right, so what reagents would we need? Need a carbonyl attached to a CL. Acyl halide. We need an acyl halide. With an NaCl3 or anything. And then we need a Lewis acid, that's right. And we've also learned how to do this directly as well. How would we add this substituent? With Phenyl crafts as well, but it's going to be very. You can do like overalculation with that one. That's right. So you're correctly remembering that there are disadvantages to the Friedel Crafts alkylation. This is the Friedel Crafts alkylation, and this is the Friedel Crafts. Alkanoylation, and there are definitely disadvantages to the Friedel Crafts alkylation that we should uh, talk about uh, a little here. What, what are the disadvantages to Friedel Crafts alkylation? Overalkylation, and there's one more. Yeah. Um, oh, rearrangements? That's right. Overalkylation and rearrangements. Let's talk about those one at a time. So here's the initial steps of the Friedel Crafts alkylation. We know that the purpose of the Lewis acid is to make the chlorine into a better leaving group. Uh, and then that, um, what, what's going to happen here? Well, if this was a secondary or a tertiary, the chlorine might leave and leave a carbocation behind. Uh, if this is a primary, the, the chlorine can't leave, but at least that would have carbocation character on this carbon, which would make it more electrophilic. Uh, but the problem is, if we form a something, if we form a carbocation, or even if we just form a primary carbon with carbocation character, there could be rearrangements, and that gives us a mix of products that we don't like. We don't like rearrangements because that gives us a mix of products. So in the Friedel Crafts alkylation, we tend to get carbocations or primary carbons with carbocation character that can have rearrangements. We don't like that. Now, how is that different in the Friedel Crafts alkanoylation? Well, notice that here the chlorine definitely is left. That's left a positive charge over here. Now, this positive charge over here is unusually stable. What is it that's stabilizing this positive charge? The acetylene ion that can Resonance, that's right. Where does that other resonance structure come from? Acetylene ion. Yeah, let's, let's put in the electron pushing arrows that show how to get that. Good, now we can draw the other resonance structure. Excellent. Normally, the electrons would want to move towards the oxygen because it's more electronegative, but now they want to move away from the oxygen to fill in this positive charge. Technically, I guess this should now be linear because we have a triple bond. That puts the positive charge on this oxygen. So, and you guys remember what the name was for this intermediate. Uh, we know that this was called an acyl group. So this is an acylium. An acylium cation. Which one is the acylium? Well, they're both acylium, because they're resonance structures of each other. There's two good ways to write an acylium, just like we've seen there's two good ways to write enolates. Uh, your instructor might prefer writing it like this, because it gives everyone a full octet. 
I prefer writing it like this because it shows that it's the carbon that's going to be the electrophile, but either of these would be a legal resonance structure to use in your mechanisms. Um, so yeah, it's good to recognize these as psyllium uh, resonance structures, and you can use either one in your mechanisms. Because, so what's the point here? Because this is an especially stable positive charge, we're not going to get much rearrangement. Because if we got a rearrangement, that would take the positive charge away from this carbonyl carbon, and it couldn't get stabilized by resonance anymore. So because the acyllium cation is stabilized by resonance, there's going to be far less rearrangement, or almost no rearrangement, compared to the alkylation. So that's the reason why this system, we don't need to worry about rearrangements. Because the positive charge is stabilized by resonance, so it doesn't want to move to another carbon. Okay, so um, that's one advantage of the friedel crafts alkylation. Now, you guys, you also mentioned overalkylation. Now, why is overalkylation a problem for friedel crafts alkylation? Why is it that after we add the first alkyl group, we're likely to add another alkyl group? Because CH2R is an activator. That's right. So, once we've added one carbon chain, since alkyl groups are activators, that's going to make it even easier to add another carbon chain. So we can easily end up with two or three carbon chains where we, uh, or a mixture of products where what we wanted was only one. So that explains why alkylation tends to lead to overalkylation. Adding the first alkyl group, is, it's hard to stop with just adding the first alkyl group because the first alkyl group makes it easy to add another alkyl group. And then maybe even a third alkyl group. So the Friedel-Crafts alkylation would tend to lead to overalkylation. Why is that not an issue for alkanoylation? Because the carbonyl, the ketone is a deactivator. That's right. This is a deactivator. Once we've added the first acyl group, it's harder to add the second acyl group. So we don't need to be worried that multiple acyl groups or alkanoyl groups are going to add. So that's another advantage of friedel crafts alkanoylation. Once you've added the first alkanoyl group, you don't really need to worry too much about more alkanoyl groups adding because this is a deactivator. So the upshot is, even if what you want to do is add an alkyl group, in many cases the way you should do that is by doing an alkanoylation and then doing the reduction. Especially if you're also worried about rearrangements. If you're just trying to add, say, this, you don't need to worry about rearrangements because there's only two carbons and they're equivalent to each other. So oftentimes here we do use an alkylation, and I guess we don't worry too much about the overalkylation issue. At least here we don't need to worry about rearrangements because there's only two carbons. On the other hand, you would never want to do an alkylation here because this is going to rearrange to put the carbocation on the secondary carbon. So you wouldn't get much credit on a synthesis if you tried to put this substituent on using an alkylation. Here you definitely want to use an alkanoylation. Uh, propose a synthesis here. Do this out loud if you like. Save time. First, add the um, acyl halide. We definitely need a catalyst here because this was a deactivator. Does it matter when you choose to do FPCL3 or aluminum CL3? No. Is the chlorine going to end up in the right place? Yes, because we know that like other deactivators, except for halogens, this is a meta director. So that's one of the advantages of having done the alkanoylation. And then either of our reductions here. For example, we could do the Clemenson reduction.
what would be the disadvantages of doing an alkylation here? Well, we don't need to worry about rearrangements because this carbon chain is so small. Uh, but if we did an alkylation, we'd have to worry about overalkylation. And then we'd still have to turn it into a carbonyl anyway to get the right directing effect. So we get a, a shorter synthesis anyway if we just add the alkanoyl group in the first place.